Hey everybody, this is Liz Davidson Beyond Solid here, and so please forgive me, I'm horrible at tabletop simulator. So you're, you're going to have to bear with me, there's going to be some weird edits, but I'm still really excited to bring to you some gameplay from Hoplomachus Victorum. This is a solo revamp of Hoplo, and if you know anything about me, or about games I like, or about things I've reviewed, this is my second favorite game after Mage Knight, and oh man, this new version is so, so, so good. Um, I won't be able to show off the best effect because as you can see, I'm like struggling to do directions on Tabletop Simulator. We're gonna do our very best. So just as sort of a quick overview, let's zoom in here, try to get it right. Basically the way that this game works is we're gonna be playing as a gladiator champion from one of the regions on this map down here at the bottom of the screen. And here, let me move that. Let's just say I accidentally cloned too many markers earlier when I was trying to set this up. Ah, beautiful. Anyway, um, <laughs> you are basically playing a gladiator in your team and you're trying to get stronger and level up as you approach your final confrontation here at Mount Vesuvius with Pluto's Scion. So the idea is that there's four acts to the game. Um, each of them consists of 12 weeks, which we're going to talk about, but what's going to happen is at the end of each act, you confront a Primus. So your Primus lineup can change from game to game. I've randomly ended up with a Primus from New Argonauts, the Parthians, and Kunlun. We are going to be playing Stygiana, who is the Primus of Pluto's refugees. So basically you can play as one of these champions, and then you have to beat three other ones in game mode as you play. So each act can take up to an hour. This is one of those games where if you want to play a full campaign, it's going to be a while. But so far, I'm finding the leveling up and the time tracking and the choices to be very fun, very satisfying. So this is the map we're going to be working with. I'll talk more about it in just a moment. Here we have our girl Stygiana. This is who we're going to be playing as because why not? She looks so cool. I'm very excited about this. Um, I know that we're going up against Pluto's Scion, but since we are Pluto's refugees, my assumption is that we live on this world um, in defiance of Pluto. So Sigiana is on the right side of things. Uh, let's flip her over. So I have her with just the art, but this is her at her full power when you are playing against her in the game. As you can see, she is terrifying. Uh, she's got a ton of health. Uh, she's got a bunch of dice. She's got tons of abilities. She is scary but like in a cool way. So let's flip that back over to just her. Um, our stats are actually over here on this card over here. So what happens when you play this game in the flesh is that you're gonna have these paper pad sheets, I'm assuming. Um, I'm just gonna laminate a bunch of mine to be real because I expect to play this a lot. But here we go, this is what Stygiana's stuff looks like right now. So here are her starting stats. She has a movement of two, so that's that green arrow up top. She has a range of one, so that's how far away you can be for her to hit you. She has five starting health. Her abilities are combat lock, which basically means that people can't break from her in combat. Um, and she also has something called swarm, which I'm going to have to look up. She also has a leadership value of five, which is the shields. Basically, uh, you can gain leadership ability throughout the game. In order to put more people in your camp, we already have like a little army of three chips and that's going to grow as we play. And over on the top right corner, you also have the dice that she has. So basically our girl Sigiana is going to start with a green die, which is pretty good, and a yellow die, which is not as good. And when we upgrade her, we can either choose to add more dice to her pool or we could upgrade dice that we already have. So yellow has the least hit potential. Black has the most hit potential, except for the evil red die, which we'll see when we see a tactician. And so you have the option to get more dice in your pool or to just have better dice, even though there's not as many. In the middle, you have a time tracker for all of your acts. So you have acts one, two, three, and four. Each act takes place across 12 weeks. You must make it to your next fight in time. So if you kind of fart around too much and you end up too far away and you can't feasibly travel to the place where you're supposed to have a fight, you will lose the game. Manage your time wisely. So you want to spend as much of it as possible doing a good job, getting yourself leveled up, getting upgrades, maybe getting some opportunities. We'll talk about that. 
but you don't want to waste so much time that you, you don't make it to fight the Primus at the end of a round. Or an act. And at the bottom, we have what's called a Scion Influence Tracker. And basically, Scion Influence increases when either you fail an event, which, if you want to watch an event failure, you can look at my video with Mike Kelly. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> um, or... You, there are opportunities throughout the game for you to spectate an event instead of actually take part, and that allows your champion to rest and regain some of their health. However, there's also a bit of a punishment when that happens. Um, as you can see, every third spot on the Scion Influence track has a little symbol. That is a Bane symbol, um, and it matches the Bane chips that you have to draw and cope with every time you hit one. It's not fun. Some of the effects are permanent until you do something about it. Some of them are things that the enemy can then draw against you in various upcoming fights. It's just not good. You don't want too many of them. So that's something that you also have a little bit of a push-pull with throughout the game. Sigiana starts with three little dudes in her army. So I have a tactician. That one red die is a guaranteed hit, so, you know, he's small but mighty. I have a defender, lots of health, very important. One black die, not too bad. And then I have an archer who will have the most range of anybody and has some pretty decent dice but does not have very much health. You gotta watch it. These cards over here are basically special ability cards that I may or may not pick up in this playthrough. We're gonna see how far I can get. My um, facility with Tabletop Simulator is low, so I will do as much as I can gracefully film for you. Um, it's ugly. <laughs> but uh, these are basically Sigiana's skill cards. So let me see if I can get in here. Maybe let me spread them. Do I want to do this? I might regret this, y'all. Ooh, so you can spread them out on the table. So basically, um, let's look at some. Uh, Stigiana can take things later in the game that are special abilities, such as this Dark Pact, where she, if she rolls a hit with a yellow die, she gets an HP. That's pretty good. I might try to pick that up. Um, gear up level 2, you have to have gear up level 1 first. So after accepting an event, I can decrease my lineup by 1, but gain a tactic. Tactics are cool. Uh, ooh, I can be enraged. Level 1 of that is that when I'm isolated, I can add a die to my attacks. Uh, at level two, if I decide to take both, I also get a, I get a green die, which is better instead of a blue. Mercenary mind. When I spectate, I can sacrifice a unit to recruit a random bag unit. So basically, when you spectate at events, you can recruit different units. Um, however, there's a limit on how many units you can have. So maybe you want to ditch one to get one. You know your enemy. Whenever you get a bane, you can get a tactic. That's kind of nice, actually. Uh, don't fear death. Oh, I do, I'm afraid. Uh, so then I can heal 1 HP when deployed to a lethal event. We're going to talk about what lethal events are. So basically, Stygiana is awesome. How do I... Okay, I got them stacked. I literally had to text Mike Kelly and ask how to do it. Alright, let's shuffle these cards up real good. I can't really see what's on them. So I've just shuffled these cards up at the top. You can always see the top one, so don't worry. Um, basically, as we travel around, so let's look at our map really quick. We're going to be passing time. We're going to be spending our weeks until we get up to a Primus. All right, so let's zoom in on Pluto's refugees. This is our starting spot, uh, and there are a few different places that we can go. So let's talk about moving around the map and then what those cards mean, because they correspond to where we go. So there are different little icons here that indicate different kinds of conflicts that we're able to get into. So this green one that looks like it has a scroll on it, it's called an opportunity. If I decide to take a week of my time to travel to the scroll, then what that's going to mean is that I can pick up an opportunity while I'm there. Opportunities are nice because they're kind of like these little quests. You can have as many as you want. Maybe you fulfill them, maybe you don't. But if you do, there's a really cool reward in exchange. So opportunities are nice because they kind of give you a sense of what you might want to try to achieve in the game. And they reward you for doing it. These blue ones that look kind of like a little coliseum, these are called sporting events. And basically, you don't know exactly which one you're going to get until you look at the card. But some of them are king of the hill, where you try to score six points, usually by standing or placing your guys on 
important markers at the center of the arena. There's also capture the flag where you have to get a chip from one end of the arena to another. And then you also have just a standard event where you have to defeat all of the opposing enemies. What's kind of interesting about sporting events is that your units can't actually die. They can be knocked out of combat, but they will just come back the next round. You don't lose them forever. One thing that's interesting, however, is that all of the HP that your champion loses stays lost until you spectate. So you have to be very conservative with how you deploy them, especially because once they die, you lose the game. So you could literally get your guy killed at a sporting event, and it's game over. So be very careful with your champion. And then speaking of killing things, these red events with a skull on them, well, I wonder what those are. Those are lethal events, and those can only be won by, um, by killing everybody else in the arena. So when you take these, it's a fight to the death, period. One thing that's interesting is that with these events, you can choose to spectate, which means that you watch them happen and you get a reward at the end of that that corresponds to spectating. Or if you're in one and it's not going well, you can choose to fail the event by surrendering. So you'll take it a beating while you do so, but you don't want to lose the game. So if you want to kind of preserve your champion's health as things dwindle, or if you just haven't realized it's just you just can't win it, you can surrender. Of course, then you have to advance the scion track that was on your little tracker up there that I showed you all earlier. But that's better than losing. So these are our options. And let's go up to the top and kind of see what we got going on here. I can straighten this out. I swear. Okay. So let's have a look at what we've got. So here, this is our sporting event that's our option right now. This one says you can only use defenders in the event. You do not have to use your hero. So this is kind of not a great deal for us because we only have one defender in our army right now. So we may not want to do that at just this moment. But what's interesting is that if you look up top, you can see flag slash hill slash pummel. So basically what that means is that this is an event where you can choose which one you want to do, which is kind of cool. So if I just want to go pummel everyone, I, I would have that option, which I appreciate. So just some card anatomy here. If you look up at the top, that evil looking skull with a crown on, that's your enemy. So that's your enemy lineup. The L means local gladiator. So whatever region you're in, there's a sack of local gladiator chips, which is pretty cool. So you can actually play someone from that area. The other thing that's interesting about that is that depending on the event, um, you can either potentially recruit that person at the end of the round, or they go into the draw bag for future rounds. So you have a chance at kind of diversifying your, your pool. That also means, however, that the enemy has more diversity as well, and they're right up against you. The helmet's just a generic unit, and T stands for tactic. And there's um, instructions in the rulebook for how to do tactics. This is an opportunity, which we might take. Uh, if I can get a Vesuvian unit and sacrifice it, then I can remove a Bane. So I don't have any Banes yet. This is not currently interesting, but I might want it for later. And then we have this thing called change of plans. Before combat, sacrifice X number of tactics, Increase your lineup by one for each tactic sacrificed. So basically you can come in here and just do a little fighty fighty. Which maybe we end up doing because I feel like we got the best shot at getting in a spat. Uh, tactics are actually quite rare in this game. They're hard to get. You can only get them as a reward after an event. And uh, once you use a tactic, it's gone. You don't just get to keep using the same tactics again and again. So make sure that you're not being wasteful with those because that would be unfortunate. All right, just to zoom out and kind of see more of what's here. Up here are the other champions that we could have chosen. So, you know, we could check out Sea Strider, Kraken Lance, he looks so cool. There's Decubus. I don't know what her name is, but she's terrifying. She's one of the Amazons. Oh, Virago, the Parthian. And uh, Bing Ching. She looks pretty cool. So you also have these piles of local gladiators. They're actually in the same order. So this is from Sea Striders area, which is um, the Lamosian area, Lamosia. The, the areas are named by like what kind of people live there, not what the area is called. Kind of interesting choice. 
Um, here we have our Atlanteans. These would be our Pluto's refugees. That's where we live. Here's some new Argonauts here. I guess this would be the Vesuvius, Vesuvius because this would match with the colors of the Amazons and then the Parthians and then the Kunlun. There are also some really nice arena references up here. So much like Hoplomachus Origins is going to have a lot of small arenas instead of the big ones that uh, Lost Cities and Rise of Rome had, but they each have their own rules. So for example, in Pluto's Refugees, which we'll probably do a fight in, so it's good to look, there's the two dark hexes are called the Beast Cages. After your turn, the beasts take a turn. And then local units are not targeted by beasts. Don't target beasts and ignore the skill combat lock on all opposing units. Oh, darn it. Fearful, non-local enemy units treat hexes adjacent to beasts as if they were occupied. In King of the Hill, you want to try to start your turn on a beast cage hex. So that's where the King of the Hill point is to score. And at the bottom, you get really important information because this is going to direct the AI for you. So the mark tells you how the gladiators move. So the first party is the closest gladiator. If there's two gladiators who are equally close, they'll go for the weakest gladiator in terms of their movement. Their target is the same. So they're going for closest and then weakest for a local unit. Non-local units might have a different philosophy, but no, they're going to go for a closest gladiator, weakest gladiator, and then they'll actually go for a closest gladiator, weakest gladiator, closest beast, weakest beast, which is sort of fascinating. So basically all the non-local units are scared of beasts and will do something with that. That's kind of interesting. And then we'll get some beasts to place on the beast cages when it's time to, to have a fight. But what's cool is that if you go in here, you can actually look at other arenas. So like, let's say this is Vesuvius. So we want to look at that. It's got its own different rules and they all do, which I think is really neat. So you can just kind of go through and check out all the different arenas. So this is Kumun, different platform, different rules and different AI. So basically you're getting a whole lot of different setups in one, which I think is quite nice. And then if you want to think about the Scions, so in one thing I really am liking about this game is that I feel like it has some of the simplicity and just pure joy of the original Lost City. Except there's a greater variety of champions and enemies to fight against. My biggest complaint about Hoplomox Lost Cities is that there's too much similarity between the factions and between the units. So that is solved in this game for sure. Hoplomox Origins was cool because it had the solo trials, but in some ways I also felt stifled by that setup because there was a certain order you had to follow. There were only so many scenarios you could do. So that's a problem that's solved by this game. The thing that Rise of Rome brought to the table, that was the second installment of Hoplomachus, was these really cool, huge bad guys called the Titans. The Titans were really a neat development, and there aren't any Titans in here that I've seen, but there are Scions, and these things are freaking terrifying. So, like, let's just look at this Hydra. That's a lot of dice. It's got multiple heads. It's got a huge army. So, when you're thinking about these you know, four acts of buildup, this is what you're thinking about. You're eventually going to confront something like the Hydra as opposed to just a normal gladiator, and it's scary. Or you have something like the, the Tauti, I guess, Tautai. This beast looks super cool and also terrifying. It also has a lot of dice that are going to direct what it does. So the way that this functions is clearly a lot like the Titans from Rise of Rome. So with this game, you're getting a taste of basically all the different things that all of the different Hoplomachus games over time could give, but in this cohesive setup that actually lets you really build up power instead of just have preset units. And I think that this whole thing is really, really exciting. I like games that let me level up. I like choices of power-ups. This is super awesome for me. And hopefully it will be for you too. So let's just play a couple sample turns. I know that it would be nice to play an entire act, but I don't think that I can handle Tabletop Simulator for this long. I'm sorry, y'all. I can play it by myself, but it is just a mess. It looks like a little kid trying to eat their food on a high chair. Like, just, oh my god. But let's look at a couple of other things that we have first. So there's a little skill bit. Let's just look at it for, for a second so y'all can see it. Maybe you want to pause this screen if you want to look through some of the skills that are available in the game. Very nice, very nice. And then if you come here, this is the order of play. So this is what we're going to be talking through, so y'all kind of get a sense of what we're doing. So every 
week-ish, this is what we're going to do. Every turn we have, we're going to do a travel phase. So we're going to travel somewhere. You can't travel back to a place that you just left. And you can't go to any of the empty Primus spots. And if you go to a Primus spot, there better be a Primus there that you are planning to fight. So Primus spots are generally off limits unless you're about to get into it. So a Primus spot are these ones that look like uh, little arenas here. And we're starting on one because that's ours, but we can never, we can't go back. We can never go home again. So after the travel phase, we're going to end up in a place. Then we're going to have what's called the event phase. And when you have an event, there's two choices. You can spectate. Uh, and your rewards for spectating are heal your hero to max HP or recruit a random bag unit. So if you want to just pick up more units, this is a great way to do so. You can then cycle that event so you get rid of it. You skip cleanup. You don't record a week. So you can waste a lot of time this way. Beautiful. But you have to add a scion influence and that is uncool. If, however, you choose to accept the event, that does take a week of your time. And then you're going to go into combat sequence. So you set up your little armies, you set up for your sporting event, and then you go to town. So there's different rewards for sporting and lethal events. So if you're successful with a sporting event, you can take someone from the enemy lineup, which is a great way to get local gladiators, which is great. Or you can take a tactic from the supply and you get to look at all the tactics and pick what you want. So you're going to develop favorite tactics that really make you happy. And then you discard the event. If you surrender, you have to cycle the event and then you get a scion influence. No, uh, a lethal event let you mess around with your stats. So you get a different set of rewards for a lethal event. And in either, and in either case, if the hero is defeated, you lose the game. Oof. There's also instructions for um, the Primus fight at the end of each act. As you can see, they get harder. So for act one, things are events as written on the card. And then your Primus fight, instead of what's on the chip, you get like a specific amount of information about how much health they have and what their, their army unit lineup looks like. In Act 2, it gets a little nastier. Primus gets a little more health. The Primus gets a little more health. Uh, you're, there's more tactics out there for them. It's a little uglier. And you also add more chip units to events. And then in Act 3, your events get even harder. And then the Primus at the end is even stronger. And then in Act 4, woof. There's also some tactics assignment stuff here in the left. So if you look under cleanup phase, there's AI tactics assignment. Um, and that's good because basically those tactics, there's instructions for how to, how to do that. And the tactics are tied to the figures that they're lined up underneath on the Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 lineup. So it actually works out pretty logically. The other thing to notice, by the way, is that you do have these unit types. So you've got archers, attackers, defenders, and tacticians. Uh, they all have their own special abilities that are just built into their type. So this Pluto's Refugees bit is very white. I can't actually see if there are lines between things, but I'm just going to assume that I can go to these places because that makes sense to me. And also I'm selfish. So here you go. Uh, so I think what I want to do is kind of poodle around in here and then go to towards new Argonauts, because it makes sense that this would be the person that I confronted first. However, that's not actually required. So these spaces that connect to the water are harbors. If you go to a harbor, you can spend a week to go to any other harbor on the entire map, and it just represents like where you were. So I can be like, ooh, look, a harbor. Oh, wow, watch me teleport across the whole world. But it takes a week. So you don't actually have to do what's closest first, because you have other options than that. But make sure that when you Make sure to be aware that when you use a harbor, you are using time. All right, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is let's just go here. So that'd be one week of time. Okay, so since I uh, so wastefully made all these weird clones, let's uh, let's just put them up here and see if they'll, <laughs> they'll do me any good up here. One moment, everyone. Oh my gosh, y'all, I figured out how to shrink it. So we're going to put it right here. So that's one week gone. And we'll just, we'll just use it to mark the weeks because I'm just proud that I made that at all, frankly. Um, I'm learning. I'm learning, everyone. All right. So we're just going to grab this opportunity card, which is, once again, blood offering sacrifice of a Suvian unit. So we may not ever actually do anything with this, with this card. We're just going to put it in our little area and, you know, save it for later in case a unlucky Vesuvian comes along that we want to sacrifice. All right, so let's grab it. We'll just put it, I don't know. I don't know what's supposed to go anywhere, so we're just gonna put it here for now. Whatever, we'll be fine. 
<laughs> uh, but we spent a week. We got an opportunity, and that was cool. All right. So let's go ahead and go to another place. Let's... Okay, I don't think that I can win this sporting event at all. So let's have a look at it again. The pummeling. It says that you can only use defenders in this event. I don't really have enough defenders that I feel comfortable flying into this and damaging my hair really bad because, well, I can spectate now or spectate later. You know what? No, it says you can only use defenders. So that would mean I had one guy going in here. I don't want to do that. That doesn't seem like a smart plan. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to spectate. So we're going to come here. We're not going to mark off any time because we're going to spectate this event. So if you look here, once again, spectate. You can heal here at a max HP, which we don't need to do. Or you can recruit a random bag unit. And that's kind of nice. All right, so after effort, I've pulled someone out of this bag. We have a defender. Okay, so actually it worked out really great. We got another defender. We're just going to put them in our little army. So as you can see, I have room for five dudes right now. So that's fine. We got four people. That's going to be nice. Um, and unfortunately... Let's grab one of these and shrink it. I do have to advance the Scion track because, of course. And no Banes yet, but, you know, it'll happen. All right. So that actually did not take up any time, however, because we just chose to spectate. Let's uh, zoom out, make sure we did everything we we're supposed to do. Okay, so we spectated, we took our reward, we cycled the event. Now we got to move that out of the way. Okay. And then skip cleanup. Yep, don't record a week. We didn't, and we added our sign up one. So we can just, by cycle, I'm not very good at shuffling these decks. So I'm just going to move this thing off to the side. And we'll see what our new one is. Oh, wait, that was an opportunity. We'll put that back. Oopsie. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just get rid of the pummeling because we decided that that was a bad, bad idea. And now we're going to look at Winds of Change. I think that's what that says. Yes, Winds of Change. Okay, so um, this one is, we get a choice. We can sacrifice an opportunity card we possess, which I might do. I don't really like the opportunity card I have. And then you can increase your lineup by two and gain a tactic. Now that, that sounds like a sporting event I might want to do. Each warrior must drink this elixir before the event, the crone explained, holding out a flask in her shuddering grip. It will allow you to see things as they are, not as you wish them to be. Oh, dear. Oh, by the way, there's something we did not start with, which I need. Uh, there's a tactic that I'm supposed to start with with Stygiana. And it is adrenaline. Increase the unit's movement by one. Very nice. Okay, so if I want to use that at some point, then I can. Okay, I actually like that pretty well. A little worried about change of plans. But we can try that as well. Alright, y'all. So let's let's look at our map and see what we might like to do. Okay, y'all. Uh, so the question is, do we go try a sporting event? Or do we go get in a fight? I'm actually gonna vote that we do the sporting event first because I've got my eye on the uh local unit. If we can win that sporting event, then I can recruit a local unit from that fight, which seems like a really good plan. So let's go here. And then we're gonna we're gonna accept this event this time. So let's um zoom in over here and do our bookkeeping. So we're gonna take a week. Good job, us. All right, so we're going to grab the Winds of Change. Okay, so we can sacrifice an Opportunity card I possess. I do want to. I want to get rid of this Opportunity card. So I can increase my lineup by two and gain a tactic. So I'm not 100% clear on all the rules. I'm assuming that gain a tactic, does it mean for this battle? Or do I like just get to have a tactic? I don't actually know. So I'm going to make it a little harder myself. I'm just going to maybe grab a tactic for this particular battle. Or I could just be nice to myself and assume it means I get a tactic, which I'll just choose later because I'm not going to deal with it. All right, so 
For now, however, let's see what we're working with. All right, so we're going to grab a Stygian unit among the enemies. So let's see who we have. We have Ignean, who can intercept a blow. we got to look up what that means exactly. I think it's like save somebody else that they're close to. They look like a defender, and they have a lot of HP, which sucks. Let's have a look at the tactic setup for them. All right, so they're going to get stunned. So that's the tactic they're going to get. Let's search around in here. Uh, here it is. Here's a stun for them. Great. And then they're going to get two of these units, but I'm not totally sure how it's going to fly. So let's pull somebody out. Okay, I don't want this. Okay, they get one, two more people. Okay. Put the tactic back. Okay, so let's see what they have. They have themselves. So this local gladiator uh, has intercept and blow. They're pretty nasty. I, of course, like them for myself. They have a tactic stun. This unit is stunned during the next turn. Discard at the end of that turn. So basically, the, next, the first person they hit gets stunned. That's what that looks like. We have an archer. We have an attacker. All right, it looks like our work is cut out for us. Okay, so the way this is going to go... Actually, I think our lineups are probably uh, reverse. Like, maybe our guys should be over here and they should be over here, but, I mean, does it really matter? I don't think so. So we're just going to put... It, we're going to put the bad guys on this side on the left. We'll put our good guys over here on the right. And then I need to figure out how to track all their HP because the, the chips are a little funky. So in a normal game, Hoplomachus, you use the chips to track, but like I find it difficult in here. So give me a second, y'all. All right. So I have basically just put dice on everybody so I can see their health value. That's the best I can do. <laughs> All right. So let's also look back at the rules for this arena. I'm pretty sure that we can handle this. Okay. Um... Got a little lion, they have roaming and combat lock. So I'll put them on a beast cage. And then got another one. Let's flip them. Tiger. Roaming and combat lock. Okay. So let's make them a couple more little dice. Alrighty. Do they count as I don't think they count as part of the the sporting event, though, because they're not people and they're not the units that are on here. So I'm just going to assume that's the case, but I could be wrong. My assumption is that I have to kill these guys. That'll be my main event. They deploy here. We deploy here. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right. So the other thing to note before we get into combat is I get to pick. I'm going to make this just like a regular old fight where we got to beat all the guys because I don't I don't want to deal with the guys the flag or keep the hill right now. Uh, we will soon enough. So we're going to we're going to do it this way. The other thing to remember, before we zoom all the way back in. Alright, so the other thing to remember, let's look at our skill sheet really quick. This is important. Um, so, these top few skills. So, first strike, the archer can do that. It can attack the first turn it's deployed. Um, basic attackers, they get, uh, when they're when they're dealt basic attack damage, they can deal one damage back. Defenders can taunt. And tacticians have initiative. So everybody's got a special ability that we should probably try to keep in mind. But for now, let's play. All right, so the enemy's going to go first, and they get to deploy first. Uh, basically, they get, uh, they're get they dazed when they enter the arena. Essentially, they have summoning sickness. So they're going to deploy just, I guess, in order. So I'm going to assume they're going to put that really good guy out first into this spot. And because he's not an archer, nothing else is going to happen just yet. So now we've got our little army. And uh, now I can put somebody out. I'm not putting Sigiana out anytime soon. Let's um, let's go for a defender. I don't just want to die. I want the whole guy. Actually. All right. So we didn't, you know, this that's it. We're back to them. So let's say that they're going to put archer out there who could do something right away they can attack but it's i don't think they're gonna bother because they can't get me this guy has one move 
They're going to move towards the closest gladiator. And I think I forgot to move my beasts this past time. They're, they're, they don't, they don't have the same hangups that we have. Okay, so, um, okay, after your turn, beasts take a turn. Okay, so I forgot that last time. It's going to be my turn, and then we'll do the beasts. I know that they roam, so we're going to have them do that just like they did in the, um, in the previous Hoplo back in Lost Cities. So I'm pretty sure I know how to do that, and if I'm wrong, my apologies. The game's still in flux. The rules are in development. No, it'll, it'll be fine. Haha. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's put another one of my people out. I would like to put out, let's, let's see, maybe an archer. So an archer can actually attack already on this first turn. So I've done my deployment phase. Okay, so basically I should actually talk this through more thoroughly. I'm just playing. I should, I should say more. Okay, so on the enemy turn, actually we should have already done this. Um, there is, well, we know he's got this tactic. So you deploy, you place a tactic, then you have movement abilities attack. So this tactic should go on this guy, but I can't stack the chips very efficiently in tabletop simulator right now. So just assume this is attached to him. There's no one to attack right now. So now I've just deployed. Um, I would do tactic placement if I had a tactic, but I don't. Now it's time for movement. So my defender has one movement. Let's go ahead and move up. Let's play ball. Then uh, I would use abilities. So my ability as an archer is that I can go ahead and just shoot and I have a range of two. So I'm going to go ahead and take a shot at this uh, tiger because I don't really want to deal with them too much. And also I want to start. Let's get in the action. So I need a black die. I need a yellow die. And let's see how, how this plays out. Fantastic. So I hit this for two. So that means that we're down two on the tiger. And so that was all of my turn. And now it's these guys' turn. So let's make another die. Oh no, here they are. Okay, so basically it's just going to mean that to move, the beast rolls a d6 and they go in the direction on here and then they do it again. So let's roll once. Let's say that lion's going first. So lion is can't actually move off the arena. And they got a two that time, they can move up. So this lion is going to move this way. Tiger, what will tiger do? Okay, so tiger is also going to move first this way. And then that five means that they're going to just move right back to where they were. Very efficient turn. Okay, so the beast took their turn. The beasts also have combat lock. Let me make sure about this. So this beast is now next to this archer. It's not a native unit. Do they attack it? I think they do. Let's have a look. Okay. Local units are not targeted by beasts. Don't target beasts and ignore the skill combat lock on all opposing units. However, this is not a local unit. So the way that I'm reading this, especially since the local, the local, non-local enemy units are scared of the beasts and move away from them, I am guessing that this beast is going to attack this guy for me. Because it says only local units are not targeted by beasts. So the beast would target whoever it's right next to, and now they're going to be locked into combat together. That's how I understand this. If I'm wrong, well, at least we had fun. Okay, so this lion also has just a black and a yellow, so let's see. This lion's gonna attack this guy, I think. So let's see how it does. Oof! So the lion actually just killed someone for me. Thanks, lion. Much appreciated, bro. Alright, so this unit's gonna go off to the side and just we'll flip it to show that it's dead. And it'll actually end up going back in the bag, but we won't worry about this yet. That was fun. All right. Okay, and then uh, we're going to have the enemy turn. So we're going to deploy again. This one's now kind of summoning sick. But this one's not. So this guy's going to come up to my defender. And now we are going to fight. So what's going to happen is... Let's see his die count. Okay, so I need a blue and a green for this guy. 
And then we'll roll. Okay, so my defender got hit for one. Not too bad just yet. And then these are beasts, the other one's dead, and this guy is... Wait, hang on, what are you? Yeah, not a tactician, so can't do anything just yet. Alright, so now it's our turn again. Let's put our defender out. Let's just bulk out. So this one just moved out here, he's a little stuck. This buddy can move, but maybe won't. So I think this person's going to stay in place. I actually think everybody's just going to stay in place. We're, we're going to skip movement. Let's just go right into attack. Because I can shoot from here. So my defender is going to hit first. So let's look at his dice. I think it's the same as the other. No, I don't think it's the same as the other. Let's see. No, I have one black die. Okay, so my defender is going to try and hit this guy. Oh, only the black one counts anyway. Okay, so we're going to go down to four. Et voila, and then my archer is also going to shoot for two. So these two dice are going to roll and see. Okay, so still only one hit, but you know. Fine. Okay, so that was our turn. Now it's the beast turn. So we're going to go ahead and roll for the lion first. So lion goes down, like so. And then what will they do? Okay, now the lion is going to, well, they can't actually move that way. So that's, nothing will happen. The tiger got a one, so they're going to actually move this way. And then they're going to go, because they're not going to mess with him because he's a local unit. And then it's just going to go back to where it went up. Okay, so we got our little beastie beasts. They didn't do too much. Now we're back to the enemy's turn. So this guy is not going to move. They come to closest and then weakest, if you recall from the information on the arena. So let's check it one more time just to see. Yes, yeah, so they're going towards the closest gladiator and then attack, and then the weakest, both for... That's true for... Uh... Yeah, we're good. All right, so what's going to happen is this one has a movement of... So the attacker is going to come towards me, closest to the weakest. So weakest is determined by health. So he's going to move like this. Except he can't because he doesn't want to move. Ooh, that's tough. So because of the way the arenas work, um, non-local enemy units treat hexes adjacent to beasts as if they were occupied. So he'll move up one, but he's not actually going to keep moving up because he would be next to a beast and does not want to do that. Treats it as occupied. Rut row. So they're kind of stuck. That's actually not too bad for us at all. Okay, the thing is, if we move any closer to this beast, we're going to end up combat locked with it. So I think I might be... Hmm. I think for movement, what I might do then is... Hang on. I think I'm going to come up like this. Ah! No. I think I'm going to move like this. And then like that. It's like a better surround this enemy right here. So that was my movement. I'm not going to deploy anybody else right now. I think we're good, actually. We got this. Um, so my defender is going to attack with his one black die. Hit. So that will be... Ah. No, you're not a two, my man. So this one will do the same. It's another defender with another black die. So let's roll. Hit. So um, this is going to take him down to one. And if my archer comes through for me, then their biggest person is out of the round. Roll. Ooh, yes. Okay, so this guy is now defeated. So let's put him, just flip him over so we know. Oh, poor baby. Ha ha ha. Okay, um, so that was a good turn for us. Now it's going to be animal turn and then our turn again. So let's do the lion first as usual. Let's just roll two dice. Let's see the red ones first and the white ones second. Okay, so... That would be five. 
And then six can't move off the map, so that'll just stay the same. The Tigre. Oh, that was exciting. Oh dear. Mm. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Let's flip that back over and straighten it back out. Oh no. Y'all. Okay, here we go. Okay, five was straight down, if I recall. Okay, let's just say that was the directions, because oops. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go. The tiger is going to go down. Uh-oh. And now it's going to be in combat lock with my defender. So it's going to attack with a blue and a yellow. So basically the beasts don't have a target until they do, you know. So let's roll. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Got my defender for two. That was brutal. So that'll take him down to two. That's okay. That's okay. We're in combat lock with this beast, but, but we can do something about it. We're, we're, we're fine. Totally fine. However, this guy is now going to move. Well, he'll move here. And he'll attack the weakest gladiator. So that's another couple rolls against my defender who may get knocked out in this round. Fortunately, he's not going to die. Oop. Yeah, he's out. But he got knocked out. That's okay. I got this. I got this under control. Because now it's my turn to move. I'm just going to stay right here and pummel this guy. So let's hit him for hopefully one. Yes. Okay. And then let's see what my archer can do with a black and yellow. So the yellow has the lowest hit chance. So let's see. Oh, yeah. So we only got him for one. So it's going to drag us out another turn. But that's all right. And now it's animals. So we got the lion. Okay, so the lion is gonna go like, ooh, the lion's gonna go like this. That's unfortunate. Because it puts him in lock with my guy, because he's not gonna, wait, could go for either one. Oh, oh no, we're both locked in with this lion. Okay, let's have a look. I don't know what the beast's preference is. Do I get to choose? Roaming. Hang on, it might be on the chip. No. Yes, oh no, it has combat lock, but it doesn't say what it's preferences. So I'm just going to be a jerk and say that this lion has a preference for this guy <laughs> because it doesn't say that I can't. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, okay. So one black, one yellow. Ah, uh, you poor on little gladiator. You got wet. All right. So it doesn't say that I have to defeat the beast, um, but we can pretend that I do. Let's move the tiger. I should have moved them both first and then attacked, but whatever. So the tiger is now going to come in here and be in conflict with me. And that's a blue and a yellow. So let's see if my, uh, how bad this guy gets hurt. Could die. Could live. Ooh, no hit at all. Swipe and a miss. I was lucky. Okay. So, um, let's do this. Now it's my turn. We're both combat locked. We can't actually move, but that's actually not a huge deal. So this guy is going to hit this tiger for one. So we'll just take it down to three. And then I'm hoping that my archer can just kill this tiger. If I get a double hit, we're, we got it. Oh, yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and take this beast out. Goodbye. See you later next time we have a little beast issue. All right. And then this thing is going to attack me one more time. It won't bother to move. All right. So it got my guy for two, but you know, I'm pretty healthy. So now I'm going to hit the lion. Take it to two. And then please, please, please let me get him. Oh, yes, we did. Okay, so now the beast also got taken out. I don't know if that was actually required, but it was amusing. So there you go. Fantastic. 
And that was victory in our sporting event. So we have won this uh, Winds of Change sport. Hooray for us! So we only read three guys out on the board. So when we increased, increased our lineup by two, that was legal. So we're all set. And um, this, sac this opportunity card got sacrificed. That's fine. This tactician never went into the fight, and that's good, because he wasn't allowed anyway. And then, um, I don't know what gain of tactic really means in this situation. So I'm going to assume that it meant just for the battle, and I didn't do it. But maybe you get one like you get it. I'm not actually sure. So that's something to ask about in the future. But the good news is now we get a reward. So when you win a sporting event, I get to pick either a gladiator from the enemy lineup or a tactic from the supply. So I'm actually going to take this gladiator from the enemy lineup. So I've now picked up this Ignean, who's another like cool gladiator who has intercept below, which is nice. So let's say that I've just grabbed him. So now my camp has some more gladiators in it. There's me. We didn't go nowhere. Okay, so now I'm at max camp size, unless I decide to raise my hero's leadership a little bit, but that's something you want to be able to do, so that's good. And then this will go back to the bag. Also, um, these enemy units will go back to the bag. Alright, so now I've made a huge mess over here. Um, <laughs> I would love to play a full act of this, but it's just taking a long time. I think this would be a lot faster in analog. But we're in a couple weeks. I've shown you a sporting event. I've shown you an opportunity. Uh, but the thing is, that's sporting event. So basically a lethal is just like that, except that if you die, you're really dead. So I would have lost a unit. Other than that, it's the same. So I would actually really like to keep going with this because this is really fun. But my computer is overheating and I'm still struggling with tabletop simulator. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna call this video. However, I hope it gives you just a sense of flavor of play for this. Um, just a couple more things to show you before we go because I want you to really see. Um, you know, in addition to being able to change out the arena descriptions, you can actually change out the arenas here. So that's what Vesuvius would look like. That's what um, I think the Parthians arena looks like. So you actually have these very different places. So like this one has a chariot. Everything has like really special, cool aspects to it. That it's just going to be amazing. Like the variety in the gameplay is going to be great. I mean, just look at this. This is really, really beautiful. And in addition to that, there's a lot of variety in the sporting events. In the lethal events, let's actually just kind of search through so y'all can see some of the stuff that's in here. So if I'm not going to play it, you might as well see, right? So you can have an ambush. You can have a sacred oath. Where you can discard some opportunities to increase your lineup. You can have swampy ground. So you lose some movement. That's rough. But there's a whole bunch of variety, different lineups, different tricks to each of the battles. So it's not all just one thing over and over again. And of course, you can spectate if you don't think you can actually handle the event, which is part of the game's tension. And then among the sports, you know, you have Challenge of the Ensnared. You must accept this event. It cannot be forfeited. Oh, God. So, you know, this one, you're, you're just stuck. You could die if you didn't, if it came up at a bad time. Pluto's Emissary, where a bad Vesuvian guy comes at you with, instead of a regular local. That's kind of exciting. Maybe you can recruit them. Uh, burning of the Chaff, before combat, sacrifice a unit. Recruit a random unit from the bag. So, like, this is really cool. There's, like, a different challenge for every single one. And then if you go in here, the opportunities, they're all really different, too. So you can get some hero prowess. Rewards include things like gain special prowess, embrace the dark. So there's there's hero prowess cards like the ones I showed you at the beginning, but there's also special ones that you can pick up through these. Remove a gain, remove a bane, gain a prowess, gain a special tactic. Basically, if you want anything cool, you're going to have to pick up some of these opportunity cards. Like this one's great. Like you get Calgacus of Caledonia, you get special units for these opportunities. So basically they seem kind of irritating because you have to spend a week to pick them up. 
but the payoff for actually fulfilling them is enormous. And this game isn't even fully balanced yet, and just looking at the amount of variety and all the cool stuff that's in here is just really something to me. Let's see if you can actually search. So the Banes too. Let's have a look at some of those just so you know what they're like. Oh, sacrifice all units. Oh, that's evil. Oh gosh. First enemy unit gains absorb one. Oh gosh. These are things that like enemy units can pick up to hurt you. Oh, that's nasty. Ooh. Oh my goodness. And then if you want to look at the tactics, those are pretty cool as well. So they all give you something different. So adrenaline increases your movements. Bolster health is nice, you know. Hamstring. Lots of that. Lots of adrenaline. Stunning. I think I forgot to use the tactic in that last battle, but oh well, we'll live. But yeah, basically you can do a lot with what this game gives you and every game is guaranteed to be different. So this is just the smallest of overviews of Hoppamaka's Victorum. I will say I personally am extremely excited about this. I have not been this excited about a game in a long time. It's been a rough year for me and this is bringing me joy at a time when I really, really needed it. So hopefully y'all will see the potential in this game as well. I don't do very many Kickstarter previews anymore. But I did this one because it really meant something to me to do it, and because I'm just truly thrilled that Hoppamaka's Victorum is coming. So if you're looking for an exciting solo game with cool combat, lots of powers, lots of upgrades, then uh, this is a game that you should very seriously consider. I hope this that I hope that you enjoyed this preview, and happy gaming, everybody.